mental well-being depends on intrinsic health of the baby it also depends on the maternal condition if she has any uh, coexisting disease or she has got any pregnancy unique problem that might affect the well-being of the baby and all of them act through the uteroplacental circulation what how is the circulation that is going on to the baby so if at all some adverse effect occurs it is mainly because of hypoxia hypoxia mainly through the uteroplacental circulation so fetal hypoxia could occur suddenly okay uh, suddenly if it occurs you can have slow heart sounds heart rate comes down and the next event that occurs is fetal death inside you know one example would be an abruptio placenta in which placenta gets separated from the uterine wall so when it gets separated the uteroplacental circulation is affected and when the separation is massive in the next few minutes the baby will die initial hypoxia followed by death of the baby chronic hypoxia chronic hypoxia is something in which there is some amount of vasoconstriction and blood circulation goes on and this vasoconstriction slowly progresses so baby learns to live with this decreased amount of blood supply and so this is chronic hypoxia the baby will have some adaptations with slowed down growth preferential growth so preferential growth in the sense which are the vital structures the structures will grow the other structures will get affected because of the hypoxia so this way you can have some sparing effects and these are called the adaptations baby can stop moving too much spending the energy right so th these are the adaptations that you can expect and your antepartum fetal surveillance aims at picking up these things picking up the adaptations so what are the adaptations that you can expect blood supply redistributes towards the upper half of the body so upper half of the body your heart lungs and brain so blood is more shunted towards the upper part of the body it is called brain sparing effect and because of this when the blood is shunted to the upper part the head grows properly but the lower part especially the abdomen becomes shrunken so your ultrasound measurement of head circumference and abdominal circumference of the baby shows gross difference so hcac will show us that there is some amount of discrimination between the growth in the different parts of the body right but the second thing is to improve the placental function placental function is affected there is some problem with the uteroplacental circulation but some compensation should happen so how does it occur it occurs with tachycardia and polycythemia so in the baby you see that baby will have increased heart rate and also polycythemia compensatory increase in the rbcs so this is the compensation baby undergoes then myocardial compromise you see the doppler changes doppler changes in the umbilical vessels so the other problem that occurs in the lower half of the body is that the kidneys will get less blood supply when the blood supply to the kidney is less urine output is less when the urine output is less liquor quantity becomes less so amniotic fluid comes down and it is seen as oligohydramnia so oligohydramnia is one of the feature that is seen in chronic hypoxia right then to conserve energy baby will have decreased movement so if you observe the baby even for half an hour during your biophysical profile measurement you may not see the baby moving vigorously as you see in other um, healthy babies so fetal assessment how do you assess if you assess the movement i told you one of the compromisation that occurs is decreased movements so what are the tests in which we are going to assess the movement one is daily fetal movement count so the mother can say the movements are decreased 
that says that there is some problem for the baby inside when you do the cardio tocogram or the non stress test we always ask the mother to press a button and mark when the baby moves inside but you trace the whole nst for 20 minutes 40 minutes 90 minutes also you may not see even a single movement of the baby so this is one other test where we see the movement and the third test is called biophysical profile so bpp also looks for one of the component of bpp is fetal movement about utero placental circulation how good is the circulation what is the way to measure so you can measure with contraction stress test it is called cst and the doppler interrogation of the umbilical vessels is the best method to study the circulation to the baby and in indicated cases you can also go to study the doppler of the middle cerebral artery and also ductus venosus circulation redistribution that is more on the upper side and less on the lower side so this can be picked up by looking at the amniotic fluid index called afi so the lower half when it suffers urine output is less so liquor becomes less hence afi is the best assessing tool to know about the redistribution of blood fetal blood flow pattern itself can be very effectively studied by MCA that is middle cerebral artery doppler and venous doppler heart rate the compromise of the myome we spoke about tachycardia right so the heart rate changes and other heart pattern changes could be observed by doing a cardio tocogram so you just look these are the means of antepartum fetal surveillance and what assesses which component is shown in this table what does the assessment say it can say that baby is not good quickly deliver the baby out it could be preterm delivery also it can tell us that baby is not growing properly in utero so be vigilant if it reaches the verge of very severe distress then better you remove the baby from the womb and try to protect the baby outside probably in the nicu non reassuring fetal heart rate pattern usually the last event of hypoxia would be the change in the heart rate patterns it is the last change students so the changes could say that it is not assuring it is non reassuring so again Uh, probably warrants delivering out the baby quickly it also tells us the possibility of intrapartum asphyxia or also can straight away diagnose intrapartum asphyxia risk of perinatal death also is one of the important information that we get by doing this surveillance postnatal motor and intellectual development could be related to the changes that you observe in these antepartum surveillance modes so how do we monitor the babies we have already made a list of things which we use for monitoring but now we go one after the other what is the importance of these things so antepartum fetal surveillance is a major question for you each component like nst or ctg then biophysical profile amniotic fluid index these things separately can come as short note questions also and the biochemical monitoring uh, methods are no longer used and we usually go for biophysical methods the first one is daily fetal movement count then heart rate reactions fetal activity liquor volume and the blood flow studies so coming to daily fetal movement count it's a cost effective one and it is a universal screening procedure you can tell everyone in any country any place you can just ask the mother to count the number of times the baby moves inside 70 to 80% of the movements are perceived by the mother again you should be understanding this concept that not all the movements of the baby are picked up by the mother about 70 to 80% of the movements could be picked up and especially the low risk ANCs 
the antenatal women with no risk factor but still we call them low risk for obvious reasons and these mothers this could be the only advocated method of surveillance you need not do any other test you can be assured if the movements of the baby are uh, adequate and satisfactory um, obesity polyhydramnios oligohydramnios can adversely or favorably affect the uh, perception of these movements and the evidence is say average 31 movements occur per minute but you are not going to really feel all those 31 movements but the baby moves uh, almost 31 on an average per minute and baby also has a sleep cycle of about 90 minutes okay so if you don't have fetal movements for over 90 minutes probably you are sure that uh, baby must be asleep just wait for some more time you may start appreciating the movements of the baby that is the reason why even nst is recorded to a maximum of 90 minutes with an idea that we may see some movements we may see some accelerations if we really wait for that 90 minutes to go beyond the sleep cycle of the baby right you have something called cardiff count devised by the hospital in cardiff 10 movements in 12 hours the woman is asked to count for 12 hours and if she has got 10 movements in the 12 hour two to three movements per hour also the other way is two to three movements per hour it is reassuring so she fixes a time morning 8 to evening 8 and if she feels about 10 movements that means you she is uh, having a baby which is reasonably doing well in utero again in one hour if she is feeling two to three movements of course in between one and a half to two hours there may not be any movements also that is because of the sleep cycle of the baby right the zero to three movements in 12 hours in the whole of 12 hours no movements or maximum of three movements is ominous so it is also called movement alarm signal